So here we have it, everyone. I have finally fully installed um, all the Rookie Mods LED um, upgrade on the car. Um, it's really good to eventually show you this. Um, it has been a bit tricky, um, but at the same time, absolutely love it. The showpiece is probably the dials, the kind of cluster, whatever you want to call it. That is really, really nice. So much nicer and brighter. Um, I went for uh, the red accents with the um, blue, because you can do whatever you want, really, like all blue. Uh, on screen, I think that's looking like cyan, but it's not. I don't know why that's coming across as a different blue on the GoPro screen, but it is the same blue as the dials, just in case you're wondering. And then we've got down here, we have the um, sort of light switches. Mine on um, auto lights, just sort of standard lights, really. Then you've got the driver's side, um, uh, electric windows, uh, the passenger side, electric windows there. Then we've got the uh, front and rear heater controls there, which when you turn them on, they both go on blue. And then this, which is really, really nice, um, but an absolute pain to fit. Um, I was going back and forth um, via email on how to fit these. Uh, I wasn't having a good day that day, so um, I was probably coming across quite sort of angry um, via email, but uh, credit, they, uh, they, she helped me. One of the issues really wasn't sort of the design of this, it's the issue with this. For some weird reason, as you probably see in the video, I'm going to show how to install all of these after I've talked about them. Um, it was just an issue I had, I think, with the cables and I couldn't get the frame out, but anyway. So, um, yeah, that is the heater sort of control. The only thing you get, which I didn't know, so just make a note of this, is these aren't the same as the um, ones in the Mark VI facelift. Um, they're actually slightly different in regards to the positioning. The one for just all feet and one for sort of all your main heaters inside for your face are the opposite. So you've just got to consciously think about that if you do want it on one of those settings. I've just got it set at the bottom, which is kind of like a little bit of everything. So it's not really that big of an issue. Um, just obviously, if you're ever to go and sell the car, then someone might think there's something wrong with it, but it's just because they're using a focus um, dial. So yeah, really happy with the sort of final outcome. I'll turn the inside light off just so you can get more of an idea of what it looks like at night. Looks pretty cool. But as you can see, I had to put, um, the only thing is, let me just put the light back on. I, the only thing is, I wish there was something here that I could have that had a light, because the kind of, when you've got it at night time, See how it just kind of stands out, it looks uneven. My OCD is, I wish I could have maybe like that switch over there. Um, that would be pretty cool. Um, I don't know if that'd be possible. I guess you could buy two and blank off one of them. I don't know. But anyway, that's a small thing. Now the um, radio isn't in at the moment because I've got on having an aftermarket one fitted, a flat screen touchscreen. So there'll be a video on installing that at some point in the future. Um, but right, yeah, what I'm going to do then is just show you a, a bit of a tutorial on how to take these out and swap them over for the new ones. Um, that one is the hardest and these 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 are really tricky but that one the dials actually aren't once you know how to do them which I'll explain in the video okay so the first thing is using one of these little torque uh, torque screws and there's a couple I think there's two uh, holes under the steering wheel so I'm gonna do them first so that's what they look like under there. Now there is three uh, Phillips uh, on this piece of plastic, so we've got to remove that. So I've removed those three. Now I believe it's a matter of, oh, sorry, there's two more under there. Okay, so, oh, there we go. It pretty much has just come away pretty easily itself. Let's see if I can just put the camera down. Ah, there we go. Now I'm going to remove this screw there uh, and there's a screw here. Now I've done them, I think this should. Uh, you just gotta give it a pretty good pull. 
Okay, so what I had to do was, um, can't get this out without this top piece. So I basically just used one of these little plastic uh, prize tools and I got it underneath this corner. So I'll just do the same on the other side. Okay, so I've got that side out now. Basically that whole piece comes away. Okay, so once you've removed that, what you've got is a Phillips here and a Phillips in that corner. I uh, might put the camera down with this just to make sure I do not lose these screws. Okay, what I've actually found is, um, just because I really don't want to lose these, I've got this little magnetic tool. And if I just put it on there and unscrew that final bit, there we go. And then basically you can get hold of the screw. Right, this is many, 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 feels like hours later. Basically, I've been trying to pull this thing out as much as possible and actually in doing so, I actually slightly cracked down there and if you can see there a little mark but what someone said on the forum is you have to get a screwdriver into the back of here and they said you should be able to feel it and if you can see it is basically slap bang there so i'm hoping this works um and you have to sort of press until it clicks which it did so let's just see right next step is you can actually see that is where it was connected into um slight cracks i think in both those little phillips but hopefully I can still get this out, but basically what you have to do is I had to actually sort of press down at the bottom and pull down with my fingers. So I'm going to continue doing that. Got it out all because of that little clip, that culprit right there, that was just stopping me from getting this out. And so basically at the back, there is a um, connector, which you'll just have to remove and then reconnect uh, with your new speedo dials. Basically just got to reconnect into there but you just want to make sure that that is fully the little black clip is fully clipped back there and already look cool it's blue it's not 90s green so i'm not sure how well you just heard that then but compared to taking it out that was so much easier to get in so that's nice and snug and that's clicked in at the top okay so to take this one out the easiest way i found was while I've been taking the dials out and the um, steering wheel column was to get access from underneath. And basically, when you go from underneath, I can show you the new one, you've got these at the top and bottom. So basically, when I pinched them from, from inside, I was able to just pull it out. Then I think you've just got basically, I think at the top and bottom, there's a pin. So you're able to just pull it out and basically the new one will just slot in. When you've got the new one in, it's probably worth just checking. So as you can see, the lights are working. So it's ready to just pop back in. To do these, which don't really need to show, just need to show one side. But actually harder than you think. I thought these would just pop off when I've had similar cars, but probably best using something like this. I mean, you probably could use a flathead screwdriver. I had to in the end, but these were in really really strong but um yeah as you can see this is what's holding it in it's just a matter of working your way from the bottom and then kind of feeling like you're going to break it but you got to be quite aggressive like i said i had to end up using this in the end and shoving it in there and really prizing it open again propped off from that side and all it's a matter of doing is unclipping that so when you've undone that this should there we go so then it's just a matter of Popping that out. Make sure you put this in the right way around because the driver's side has the um, like you know double sort of press down feature. And then just reconnect that. Let's just turn the ignition on. And if I turn the lights on, as you can see, they're working. So I know that one's all good. And I'll just do the same on that side. Okay, so that side's in now as well. Next thing is to remove this and the stereo. So I've removed that, so it looks like we've just got some two Phillips screws. See if I can pick this up. It looks like there's another screw back there. Got it. So it's one of these, which luckily you're actually able to get a screwdriver up in here and do it. So that wasn't too bad. So while I've got this like this, there we go. So then they come out, there we go. There's another screw I didn't realize, which I'm gonna guess is in that one as well. So holding everything in place is one, two, three, 
for and the screw which I showed earlier back here with the um, torque. So there's five things in total. So this sh should, actually instead of trying to pull the whole thing, what I realized is I can actually just get to the screws here that are holding this in place. So I thought that way I don't have to mess with trying to yank that out and potentially damage any clips. Oh my god, this was a huge pain in the ass to get out. Weird wiring. Basically, I cannot get this out because they've like somehow intertwined the wires around the bracket, but it made it nearly impossible for me to get access to that damn little green clip, which basically goes in this like eyelet here and clicks into there. So you've got to remove that before you can remove that. And it was ridiculously hard. I mean, if you look at the size of like my hand in comparison to this space, it and it's not that simple because you've got, then if I can sort of try and pick it up, but there's like little clips that are holding it in place. But anyway, enough moaning. I've been able to get it out. I'm going to try and get the new unit in now. So I've got it in, bit of a pain, but um, yeah. Uh, last thing to fit now is basically the heated front and rear window. Then it should just be a matter of popping them in. Cool. Okay, so in this video, this is the past talking about the future, but basically I'm going to go back to the video of me sat in the car at night um, with all the lights on. So let's do that now. Okay, everyone, so um, well done for watching the whole of this video. It's probably going to be a really long video, um, but I think it was really, really cool to sort of show off the Rookie Mods um, light upgrade that you can get for the car. Um, one thing I didn't mention is you can get different colours like red and, you know, brighter green, and I think you can get, like, purple or something. Um, so you can choose what you want. I wanted that kind of new Ford look, so I've gone for blue. As well as showcasing this, uh, I've done the video with all the tutorials to help people because um, there's not enough out there uh, properly for how to do the dials and actually there was nothing on this. I know it wasn't probably fully finished with the detail but I was just having a really bad day and I didn't quite get to show it fully installed at the very, very end. But hopefully it guides you in the right direction of how to get all the different parts out and installed. So that's it everyone, um, hope you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching, see ya, bye.